In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, before I begin, I, I want to thank you guys again for your prayers uh, for my recovery. And um, and uh, know that I continually pray for you. I pray for you guys, the rosary, every morning. You guys are included in my rosary, as well as your families and your intentions. And uh, so I would ask for your continued prayers. I, I'm going to be... It's going to be a little bit longer haul than I thought. And um, so I, I do still have quite a few aches and pains. Um, so I'm taking it really slow and just want to want to get back to, you know, where I was or better. Um, so I'm only, we're only given one body. So <laughs> my goal is to get back to where I was or better. So anyways, I ask for your guys' continued prayers for that. Um, and thank you for the prayers. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this new document that came out um, from the Vatican. There's a you know a lot of stuff out there already on it, and I've I've had a chance to read some of it. I've had a chance to listen to some of the commentary that I've heard or uh, that that's out there, and I would say probably eighty percent of it seems to be casting suspicion on the document in one way or another. Um, that it's trying to suppress Mary's voice or um, uh, it's changed the rules, you know, made it uh, tighten the, the noose on the bishops, the rules on the bishops and things like that. Um, the, there are a number of things that I'm not hearing at all. And one of them specifically is that the faithful have absolutely no obligation to believe in any Marian apparition uh, in order to gain salvation. Now, with that being said, it's you know, it's not saying that we shouldn't listen, okay? I think if, uh, you know, if we would have listened to Our Lady of Fatima about, you know, her prayer or her request being heeded, we may have not had World War II. Um, so, you know, I'm, I stay in the middle on these things. But I, I do want to look at it from a more positive light rather than um, a lot of the suspicion and the negative that a lot that seems to be out there. That seems to be... Um, the majority of, of the way this is, people are looking at this. And I'd kind of like to look at it in, in the opposite, in the opposite way. Um, the, one of the things in the document, it says that the doc, the bishop cannot speak is, and that's what I'm hearing. Okay. In, in some of the, the, uh, the um, media is that the bishop can no longer speak on whether or not, it is um, a, 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 an alleged apparition uh, or phenomena in that way is happening. And that's not totally true because once the bishop does this investigation, what it says is that the bishop cannot speak publicly, okay, until his, his uh, findings are reported to Rome and Rome reports back to him. If it's found to be authentic or... Um, viewed in a positive way uh, from the Vatican, then there are, then the bishop is allowed to promote it. So when you hear that on, from different people on the internet saying that the bishop can't speak, that's not, that's not the whole truth. The bishop can speak. He just can't speak as soon. Okay. So it seems to be streamlining information. Um, one of the reasons I believe that is, is because there are so many alleged and so-called apparitions um, going on around the world in which people are claiming to receive visions and messages from the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, I would also say that I believe that there is a difference between, um, it may fall in a different category. I'm not real familiar with it. Maybe some of you guys are out there, but I think it's different from someone receiving locutions um, that they believe are coming from the Blessed Virgin Mary as, an, as opposed to an apparition. An apparition is when a heavenly being appears to a person on earth, okay? And so that's not, again, they're, they're, it, it's kind of diced up in the sense that that's not to say that a person can't have a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, people have visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary all the time. These are singular graces that are given. I don't think that the uh, document is doing away with the supernatural I've heard, um, you know, naturalism is now being introduced into the church on Marian apparitions. I don't believe that either. I think this document has, um, 
in a number of ways is is trying to tackle some things within the church and specifically um people alleging that they're receiving visions and apparitions from the blessed virgin mary uh and messages for the world in the church and um without their bishop's knowledge because a lot of this is going under the radar um and then it, the whole thing turning into a circus only for people to find out that it's fraudulent later. And so there was one visionary in particular, I believe I read that reacted to this document almost immediately and um, basically addressed Pope Francis in talking about mutual respect. Yet from what I understand, this person was also told by the local bishop not to hold any more gatherings and going against the bishop and not being obedient um, held more gatherings. So it's kind of odd that someone who alleges they're receiving apparitions and messages from the Blessed Virgin Mary would address the Pope and say that they need to talk to each other or just have mutual respect, yet this person doesn't seem to have mutual respect and obedience to their own bishop. So I, I think that this document is going to move in that direction in which these things turn into a circus and they're found out to be fraudulent it's to kind of rein it in. There's so many of them now, um, more than ever. And I, there's been an explosion of it. A number of years after Medjugorje started, there seems to have been an explosion of this. And um, again, I would differentiate between someone that's receiving locutions, which um, very well could be true, as opposed to an apparition. Like the apparitions are different. Um, the other thing that I would talk about is the... Uh, the negative effect that it can have on believers. Okay, so <coughs> there are some out there now that are claiming to receive messages from the Blessed Virgin Mary, as well as from Jesus, saying that Pope Francis is an infiltrator. Pope Francis isn't the Pope. Pope Francis is the desolation of abomination. Um, all kinds of things. And you have, they, they build almost like a cult following and um, it, it is harmful to to the Catholic, to the faithful lay person, okay, in which we're always to be submissive uh, to the magisterium of the Catholic Church. Whether or not we agree with what they say off the cuff or their personal beliefs, we're always to be obedient to the magisterium of the Catholic Church. The other thing is, is that there can be alleged apparitions in which people follow these for years under the radar, and then let's say the, the bishop does an investigation, keeps these findings to himself, reports to Rome, Rome reports back to him, the bishop comes back and says, it's not uh, uh, authentic, okay? He, they find uh, <coughs> problems with the visionary themselves, or they find fraud, or they find people making a lot of money, or whatever it is. There's a number of words in this document that deal with that kind of thing. Um, Many times the people that have followed these things for so long um, will find themselves very, very disappointed in the end. Um, or they will go against the bishop and say, well, we don't believe you, bishop. We don't believe you, Rome. We're going to follow this anyway because they're, they're so sucked into it at that point. And so that can be very, very, uh, very uh, harmful. Uh, to the faithful. And you'll notice, you know what I, I'll tell you that I've noticed personally is that with these things like this, where you, people attach themselves to one uh, visionary or seer or, uh, you know, something of that nature, it, it seems to me that they spend more time reading the messages of the seer than they do uh, the gospel. And that's one of the other things that the document um, talks a little bit about. <coughs> it talks about um, where the messages or the apparitions become more important uh, to the believer than the magisterium of the church or the uh, teaching of the church or the, even the gospel itself. And a lot of times these people don't have a good understanding of scripture and can't even see where sometimes, I would say the, many times, where scripture itself is being distorted. And again, according to St. Teresa of Avila, that's one of the ways that you can tell it's not from God is if it distorts the scripture, if it contradicts any article of faith, um, 
I would say going against the magisterium or calling the Pope the Antichrist is a red flag, a huge red flag right off the bat. Um, one of the other things that I can see with this document is that um, it can, this may act as a slingshot. I, I personally see the document and the new rules put in place in order to streamline information to make a declaration, whether positive or negative, on any one given um, uh, apparition or alleged visionary or seer or whatever. And one of the reasons this is, again, is because there's so many of them now, for one, and for another, the, the information spreads really fast and it can get out of control really quickly. Um, so I, I think I, I think you're going to see a lot of this kind of stuff kind of reined in. Um, the one of the things, one of the dangers, I guess, I see of this. And I would I don't know that I'd call it a danger, but one of the things that came to my mind, and it was um, specifically Garabandal. Okay, so Garabandal has not been approved, nor has it been condemned. Um, one of the reasons is because some of the prophecies have yet to take place. With that being said. The sensationalism that has arisen um, out of the prophecies of Garabandal, specifically the elimination of conscience, or uh, what some people call the warning, um, may have a may slingshot in a negative way back towards Garabandal itself. And so, one of the things that the document is looking for is fruit. What kind of fruit is it producing? Well, the warning and the elimination of conscience has become so popular. Um, and that, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think people need to be aware of it. Personally, I do. I personally believe Garabandal is authentic. Um, but one of the things that the Vatican is going to do is to look at the fruit. And so if they take the sensationalism that's been created by a number of people with the warning and the elimination of conscience, and then they look at the fruit of uh, how much fear has it's caused um, anxiety where people are paying more attention to uh, seers rather than the church, um, where they're going against the church, where they're casting negative lights on documents um, and that kind of thing. It, it very well could easily slingshot back towards Garabandal um, just by connection of the prophecy itself. Okay, so the prophecy was given at Garabandal, the words were spoken. But then in recent years, we've had a whole bunch of people, um, you know, write books and, and uh, um, you know, movies and, and interviews and, and that kind of thing. Um, and where, there, where it's caused, in many cases, unfortunately, it's caused many cases um, for people to be afraid. And that's really not from God. I've said that before. Anything that's going to cause you fear or anxiety or not leave you with a message of hope is not from God. Um with that being said, I would continue that line of thought. Um, Jesus is in charge of his church. Jesus is never going to leave his church. Jesus is always going to guide his church. And it, what what I find so amazing is that people that believe this actually think that the church, the magisterium is turning against them in some way. And this is a distorted view. I, I I can tell you this just from my understanding of Scripture and some of the things that the Lord has revealed to me. It It is a distorted view in that sense. It, this is a test of faith. Are we going to remain faithful to the magisterium of the church? Are we going to remain obedient to the magisterium of the church? And we see many, many, many people falling away from the, not only the teaching of the church, I mean, if you want my opinion, you know, the apostasy has already started. You know, you have so many Catholics that no longer believe in the real presence. Um, you have so many Catholics that don't agree with the teaching on sex before marriage or contraception or even pornography anymore. So, but all the blame seems to be put on Pope Francis for whatever reason. And so, you know, we're to always pray for the Pope and pray for the bishops. Um, my fear, again, is that as far as Garabandal is concerned, um, that there's so much attention being given to the warning and to the elimination of conscience that they may look at the fruit of the um, promoted seers and visionaries that have yet to be approved by a local bishop or by a church um, or by the church. <clears throat> that are giving messages that include the warning of Garabandal, but at the same time um, calling Pope Francis 
an anti-pope and it, things like that. So again, by connection, it very well could have a negative effect on Garabandal where they give it a negative um, point of view or a negative, um, I'm trying to think of the word, um, declaration uh, as not authentic simply because of some of um, the bad fruit that is connected to it. Um, I think also what you're going to see, and this is just what I sense, I said this before, I think you're going to see a lot of these visionaries and a lot of these seers and a lot of these uh, YouTube channels and web casts and podcasts and whatever else that are promoting a lot of this stuff, I think you're going to see a lot of this stuff reined in, okay? Um, the seer that I mentioned earlier, uh, has been promoted by a number of different people and is now being removed. All of a sudden, when this va when this document comes out, it's being removed. But four weeks ago, this same person was being quoted as giving messages from Mary to the world. And so, you know, kind of trying to, you know, cut ties with this person all of a sudden when this document comes out. So I have no problem with... Um, with uh, visionaries or seers or things like that um where my concern is is the discernment process and so the discernment process really lies in the hands um of the magisterium there was another one recently or a number of years ago that um that was being promoted heavily and um then there were some things that came out that <laughs> you know what was being promoted wasn't quite accurate Two bishops came out and made their statements and the person was still promoted only to be, you know, um, kind of, uh, how would I say, cut off at the end. And so, you know, we just have to be careful. But again, we don't have an obligation to believe in Marian apparitions uh, to gain salvation. The most important thing is to be holy. But when the, when the subject matter is 90%, uh, this message from this person or this message from that person or this message from that person or, you know, this seer or that seer or this visionary or whatever. And we're spending the majority of our time doing that rather than reading the scriptures, rather than learning our faith, rather than being um, in, in deep prayer and coming into intimacy with God, um, then there, then something's wrong, okay? And this is what sensationalism looks like. If you want to know what it looks like, just get on the internet and Google illumination of conscience, the warning slash Garabindal. And it, it, you'll be, you will go for days. You could go for days um, looking up all the information that's out there on just this one prophecy. And <laughs> the funny thing is, is you don't even have to take a lot of time to do it. But if you look at one, then two, then three, you're going to notice contradictions um, right off the bat. One visionary says this, another visionary says this, another visionary says that. And there's no consistency. And so I think that this document is a good document, personally. Um, I think it meets the needs of the time uh, in the sense that there are so many Marian apparitions or alleged apparitions happening now um, and people claiming to receive visions and messages from Mary. And again, I'm in no place to judge one way or the other. I can um, at times see red flags through discernment, through my understanding of scripture. Um, and I've been charged by my pastor that I have an obligation to warn the faithful when I see that. So I'm I in, in doing something like this, I don't mention names and things like that, but I, I, will con I will counter it with a video if I see it, or I will put it in writing and send it to people in authority within the church. And the only reason that I do that is out of obedience to a priest. Yeah, number one. Number two, I don't want to stand before Jesus and him asked me the question, you knew this was deceiving my people and you did nothing to warn them. Why? I'm not going to answer that question. So I'm not worried about what people think or their opinion of me doing that. I, 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 I'm just being obedient to a priest and I do not, absolutely do not want to answer that question or have that question asked to me um, from Jesus when I stand before the judgment seat of him. And so uh, I will I will do that. Um, I have an obligation, as the priest said. So to be honest with you, I really don't like to.
that's I, I don't I don't want to. It's out of obedience. And um, I think that uh, what I'm sensing is that you're going to see a, 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 they're, they're going to rein a lot of this in. The Vatican is going to rein a lot of this in. And so the new rules for the bishops, the bishops are to go investigate personally, come up, <laughs> excuse me, with their own conclusions and uh, by their investigation and report directly to Rome before speaking publicly on anything. If it is found to be... Um, fraudulent, if it's found that the person has mental problems, if it's found that, you know, people are using it to make money, which there are a lot of people making a lot of money off of this. And that's not the only thing people are making money off. People are making money off of causing scandal in the church. Okay. All they do every single day is attack the magisterium, attack the Pope, attack the Pope, attack the Pope, and they're making a fortune off it. Um, and there's a lot of disinformation out there. Okay. Um, one of them, I can give you one right off the bat. The reason that the restrictions were put on the traditional Latin mass was not to attack the, the liturgy of the of the traditional Latin mass. The reason the restrictions were put on it was because lay people were weaponizing the liturgy of the traditional Latin mass and using it to undermine the magisterium of the church. That's why the restrictions were put in. And in many cases... Some of these people have swayed bishops and priests into their corner, okay? And so you're seeing a falling away from the true magisterium, okay? Well, again, whether or not you agree with Pope Francis or not, as I said, a lot of the hype was put out there that he was going to bless same-sex unions. Well, no, it's not. Well, people point to the word couples in the document. But again, if you read two lines down, it defines what couples means, Okay. Um, I pointed that out in the videos that I did on the document itself, um, that he was going to ordain women as deacons. He just did an interview in uh, on 60 Minutes in which they asked him the same question. And it wasn't the way that I don't believe it was the way it was taken. I believe we're talking about 60 Minutes. They asked those questions loaded. And so, in other words, they try to force words into the Pope mouth, into the Pope's mouth. And the Pope very clearly said no. There will never be women deacons. No. And he very clearly said, we're not to bless the couple, we're to bless the individual. <laughs> exactly what I said from the beginning. And But yet people out there, they believe this hype, they believe this hype, they believe this hype. They, they seem to never have an ability to go back and reflect and go, oh, well, maybe I did misunderstand. Or maybe I didn't read clearly enough. Or maybe I was reading that document um, with a... a uh, it, with a lens that it, in a way that I wanted to see it without opening my mind up and looking at it and approaching it, approaching it in charity, you know? And so it, again, it's just, a, it's just, a, I think it, you need to remain balanced. That's really the most important thing. Um, but I think with this document, what you're going to see is, um, is a reigning in a of a lot of this stuff. You're, in other words, this document makes it, it seems to me anyway, okay, is that this document makes it quicker for a bishop to um, take control of a situation um, rather than letting the situation completely get out of hand, okay? So it's not to say that the bishop can't speak. I've heard that a number of times. Well, the bishop can no longer declare. Well, <clears throat> he can no, no, no longer declare whether or not it's supernatural, but he can declare whether or not it's authentic, Okay, that there's nothing that stands in the way of the faithful believing it. And that's a positive light. It's the same way Medjugorje is being viewed now. With that being said, um, the Vatican has a lot more information than any layperson uh, on the face of the planet. Okay, and again, if you go back to Medjugorje, if you think about the times we're living in, okay, and in Medjugorje, it was said that these are the last apparitions. So let me pose a question um, to those that would be against this document and want to continue to promote people or, uh, quote people, um, that claim to be receiving alleged visions and apparitions of Our Lady and messages from heaven. 
You can't at the same time believe the message of Medjugorje in which she said these are the last apparitions to those six visionaries and at the same time be quoting or promoting visionaries and people that claim to be receiving apparitions from Our Lady um, because that's a complete contradiction. So either either you believe in Our Lady of Medjugorje that she said that and, and you believe that, um, but promoting people or quoting people or, you know, putting it out there, this person said or this person said, um, as far as an apparition goes, I don't know how you can how you can hold it in both hands. It doesn't work. Um, you either believe what Our Lady of Medjugorje said or you don't. And again, in the times in which we live, um, the reason Our Lady won't appear again is because she won't, in that way, is because she won't have to. The triumph is coming. And... <laughs> <clears throat> there is so much darkness in the world. I I I'm, I fear um, for for people that are being deceived in such a way as to as to turn against the magisterium. And a lot of it is directed at Cardinal Fernandez because of some books he wrote. I don't agree with the books he wrote. Um, I know from what I've read that the Vatican was uh, totally aware of it. For all we know, the man made mistakes, he's repented. We don't know everything that comes out, okay? Um, I think in one sense, it, one, he, well, in one book he said he didn't regret writing it or things like that. These things are between him and God. It has nothing to do with with doctrine, okay? If you believe that, then you have to believe that the Holy Spirit is no longer guiding the church, that Jesus is no longer with us, that somehow Satan has taken over. Okay, and it, again, there's so many things out there about the Antichrist and the man of perdition and, um, you know, Rome losing faith and, and becoming the seat of the Antichrist. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Um, I have read, I, and again, someone would have to confirm this, that that was a second take and at the time was put on list, uh, Rome's list of prohibited reading. The other way to look at this is somehow people connect Rome with Vatican City or the chair of Peter. And if this in fact what is what was said, Our Lady never said that, that Vatican City would lose faith. She never said the Magisterium would lose faith. She never said the chair of Peter would, you know, that the Antichrist would sit in the chair of Peter. I, I, will, I will say this, um, Rome has lost faith as a city. I think that even in Italy, I think there's only 10% of people that attend mass on Sunday anymore. The entire country's lost faith, but the countries all over the world are losing faith. Okay. So in other words, when it comes right down to it, what are you going to cling to? Are you going to cling to an alleged seer or visionary that's being promoted that has yet to be approved by the church and their words? Or are you going to cling to the rock on which Jesus built his church? in which the gates of hell will not prevail. That's really the answer. And as I've said before, St. Catherine of Siena said it best, you know, and we're to follow the example of the saints, that even if the Pope were an incarnate devil, we are to gather around his bosom in unity and hope and in prayer. Okay? So even if the Pope were a, a uh, personally, were personally a heretic and living a, a, a terrible life and, you know, committing all kinds of... We're to gather around him in hope and in prayer and in unity. This is the example of the saints. So th those are going to be the choices. That's what it's going to come down to. What, what I see coming down the pike with this document is a reining in of a lot of this, um, these things that have turned into circuses um, that where people are making money, where they're frauds, where there uh, is something psychologically wrong with the person. Um, and a lot of this stuff on the internet that's that is all over the internet no matter where you go it's all over the place and so i think you're, you're going to see a lot of these things um either revamp the way they're doing things or or complete or be shut down by the local bishop um it's just that simple um <clears throat> again i i i would you want to spend the majority of your time learning the faith in prayer, um, becoming intimate with Jesus Christ, intimate with intimacy with God, and growing in faith, hope, and love. That is the majority of our of what we're to do, okay? Um, Our Lady has given us everything that we needed to know. 
She's already given us every instruction that we need. In Medjugorje, it is no different, okay? We're called to prayer, called to repentance, and a call to penance, okay? Eucharist, scripture, confession, you know, she laid out the five little stones. They're not hard. They're simple. They're very simple. Uh, the rosary, okay? So we don't have to go running around listening to visionaries and seers and people that claim to be receiving messages from God, okay? Um, to to know where we are, uh, know the times we're living in, and what to do about it. There are no new messages, okay? And again, be discerning. If it's causing you fear, if it's causing you anxiety, if it's confusing you, <laughs> then stay away from it. That's not from God. Our God is not a confusing God, okay? Um, there's a difference between that and not understanding, okay? So, and again, I, I do want to differentiate between an apparition and a heavenly being appearing to a human on earth and someone that is receiving locutions. I think locutions are dealt with differently than apparitions, okay? So the 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 locutions themselves are studied in a different way, I believe, than the apparition. So it is a different experience to receive a locution and receive an apparition, okay? And I think the document is specifically talking about apparitions where, um, you know, it, it's it's gained a, a following and that kind of thing. Um, I am one that believes that um, the Virgin Mary appears to a lot of Catholics um, uh, throughout the world uh, during their lifetime as a singular grace. This doesn't mean that you can't see the Virgin Mary, okay? That's different than an apparition where she comes and gives a message for the world and the church. That's a completely different thing. That doesn't mean that she can't appear and give a personal message, okay, or a word of knowledge. Um, I think this document is directed, uh, uh, is meeting the times in which we're living, in which there are so many um, alleged apparitions. I think the church is really trying to um, protect the faithful from deception because 90% of these things um, are not authentic. They're just not. I can tell you that right off the bat. Um, just from the ones I've looked into and the ones I've seen and, and things I've, <laughs> I've noticed or, you know, or where scripture is quoted or um, regurgitated messages that have already been condemned by the church. I, I, think, it's, it, I think it's going to, uh, it's directed towards um, protecting the faithful from being deceived. Um, so I, I am personally, I tend to look at the document in a, in a spirit of charity and in a spirit of light rather than a spirit of, um, uh, how do I say, suspicion, okay? And so a lot of people that are, that are commenting on this are fulfilled, or, um, or I'm sorry, um, are uh, interested in or follow or familiar with Marian apparitions. So the question I would pose to them is, you're familiar with Medjugorje. In Medjugorje, it was said that our, this is the last time she's going to appear in this way to these six visionaries. If you're going to be suspicious, then you, and you believe Medjugorje, you believe Our Lady of Medjugorje, then you should be suspicious of anyone claiming to receive apparitions and messages from Our Lady after that was said. That's where the suspicion should be, okay? Um, another thing I, I heard was that the church will no longer declare um, a Marian apparition supernatural. <clears throat> That's not really the case. That's not the whole truth because in it, the Pope can eventually say that it is of supernatural origin. Um, and one of the reasons I think that, uh, that this is put in, in this way is because it does take years and years and years to study, um, something like Fatima, um, something like, um, uh, Akita, okay, for the Pope to be able to do this. So it's not that the church can't rule that it, or will no longer rule that it's supernatural or not supernatural. The church can still do that. The Pope can do that, okay? That's where the time, that's where the time is made up, okay? Or that's where the time is taken, okay? <clears throat> so they're not going to rule anything supernatural, um, 
until the events are over or the prophecies have taken place anyway. Okay, so again, the only the only negative I think I can see coming from this again is the sensationalism that has arisen uh, revolving around the elimination of conscience or the warning as prophesied at Garabandal. And then by connection, they look at Garabandal in a negative way, okay? And so again, this is one of the dangers of just jumping onto things and believing them without a, a bishop approving it or um, you know they got their bishop behind them. Um, like I say, many times where the bishop was for something, okay, it was found out later that it was not authentic. In the same way where a bishop would suppress something like divine mercy, later it was found to be authentic. <clears throat> so the key is patience. And I think that is what is, um, <laughs> what is lacking in these times. Um, there are prophecy hunters and visionary hunters that will go out, find the next visionary, find the next seer, and promote them as though they have already been approved when in fact they are still in the process of being discerned. And many times in those cases, what happens is the result is sensationalism and it leads to bad fruit for the faithful, uh, fear, um, addiction to the messages themselves, um, all kinds of things can come from it. So personally, I, I, approach this document in a, in a spirit of charity and a spirit of love. And I'm trying to look at the positive um, uh, angles of it. And at the same time, trying to look at some of the negative effects it may have on apparitions that I personally believe are authentic for no other reason than the sensationalism that's been created around it. So anyway, um, in the meantime, I would um, ask you to Continue to pray for me. As I said, I got, I've got i got a little longer road ahead of me than I thought. Uh, I still do. I still do hurt. So um, day five was the worst, I, I, but <laughs> the big ones are, are still there. So um, I'm, I've seen a couple of other doctors uh, and we're going to we're going to proceed in the way that I need to proceed to um, get better here. So uh, I thank you for your prayers and, and know that I pray for you guys every day. Please pray for the Pope, pray for the bishops, pray for the priests, pray for unity in the church, okay? Um, above all, seek intimacy with God and to grow in faith, hope, and love because inevitably what will drive the division out of the church and the confusion out of the church is love, okay? So um, with that being said, may God bless you, may he keep you, may he cause his face to shine upon you, and may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.